Hello, welcome to our tech project. So we decided to do our project on crystalline glazes. Uh, so these are uh, ceramic glazes that uh, grow crystals in them. So it's similar to the crystallization lab that we did uh, in class this year. And so our liquid phaser is the molten glass of the glaze. And then the crystals growing in it are often zinc or uh, sometimes magnesium. And so different oxides have differing solubility in the molten glass at different temperatures. Um, so as the glaze cools back down, then some of those are able to crystallize out into these crystals. Uh, so what are the glazes? Uh, they're a thin layer of glass. And so this glass is made of mostly silica, alumina, and fluxes, uh, as well as the colorants that give them all their, their color. And so they're applied as a wet powder. So the silica and alumina and everything are all come as powders and water is added so that they will stick on to the pottery that's been made. And so you have the picture down there with the paintbrush, they're applying it on there. Uh, the, the powder and the bag up are what it looks like before it's made into glaze. And then they're put into kilns uh, and fired to about 2,350 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, because the glass has to be nice and liquid for the crystals to grow into it. Uh, so this gets the glass all the way melted and into a nice liquid consistency. And so the zinc crystalline glaze composition. So it's 25% uh, silica, which is the glass, uh, which is what is responsible for forming the glass. And it's 50% uh, 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 fluxes which is uh, responsible for the glass forming in the liquid uh, in order for the crystals to grow. And then it's a 25% zinc oxide, which is responsible to uh, help uh, form the crystals inside the solution by lowering uh, the melting point of the material. So the zinc silicate crystal size, they vary in terms of the uh, how the temperature is being affected in this case, uh, so similar to what the crystal growth that we did in class uh, this semester, where we sped up the, the procedure by using the ice, which in this case uh, would form, as you look in the right of the page, it will form uh, small crystals on the, on the surface of the uh, pottery. But then we also did, uh, we also let it rest. We, we also did the second test where we rested it through uh, letting it cool down by uh, uh, normally by itself. And then that, will, that would mean that it will form uh, larger crystals on, on the uh, pottery. So in this case, the slower the, uh, the, slower the uh, process, the larger the crystals are. And then the faster the, the process, the smaller the crystals would turn out to be. In chemistry, you do want purity because it gives you the larger crystals, um, but it doesn't matter in the art world because you might want to design with smaller crystals. So that's the good thing about uh, pottery. Um, and now we're going to talk about colorants. Um, it's the same concept of simple chemical tests. Uh, the difference is we use those colors for uh, information and the pottery people use it to uh, help get more beautiful colors. And uh, one example would be that on the left, the nickel, when it reacts with the silica, it gives you that brownish, yellowish uh, sort of background color. And when it reacts with the zinc, it's that's what produces the blue or navy blue uh, crystals. And um, yeah, so. So in pottery, you can actually make your glaze matte. And, by, and to do this, you would just add magnesium carbonate to any normal glass, glossy glaze. So what the magnesium will do is it'll crash out or precipitate, which creates tiny little crystals that aren't visible, but these crystals turn that glossy glaze into matte glaze. So on the right, you see a cup that's glossy. So this one doesn't have any magnesium in the glaze. And the pottery on the left is kind of matter than the other one. So this one does have magnesium in the glaze. So yeah, I think a lot of people would be surprised by just how much chemistry is going in on in ceramics. Uh, so here was just a little taste of the chemistry that uh, ceramicists use. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching.